it's become a bit of a joke. The USA still lacks high-speed rail. A country that boasted some of the world's best railways a century ago finds itself without a single bullet train, and the one currently under construction hasn't had a smooth journey. However, a new company is attempting to bring high-speed rail to the US within just a few years, and surprisingly, it all began in Orlando, Florida. This is the narrative of America's ongoing struggle to establish high-speed rail and why this latest proposal might be its most promising opportunity yet. When planning a trip between two major US cities, most Americans would typically mention only two viable options, driving, even if it means spending hours on the road, or opting for a plane if the distance is too extensive. Convincing people here to travel by rail instead is not an easy thing to do. To some extent, their perspective is understandable. There's no denying that the US lags behind today's leaders in the realm of railways. However, it's crucial to remember that this hasn't always been the case. The first railroads in the US were constructed nearly 200 years ago, and for over a century, America maintained one of the world's most advanced and extensively used railway networks. However, things took a turn in the mid-1900s with the advent of the jet age, enabling faster long-distance travel across the country. Simultaneously, Americans developed a deep affinity for cars, and in the 1950s, the interstate highway system was established. By the 60s, car travel had surged almost fourfold since the mid-40s, and the number of plane journeys had multiplied nearly 15 times. As automobiles and airplanes gained prominence, many engineers who had previously worked on railways transitioned or retired. They were succeeded by engineers specializing in aerospace, leading to a depletion in the talent pool for rail engineering. And and yet, even though rail travel was in decline, the US still had big ideas for it. In 1965, after Japan launched the Shinkansen system, President Johnson planned an immediate response. For more than a decade, high-speed tests were conducted along the Northeast Corridor, achieving speeds exceeding 150 miles per hour. By 1969, services were operating at speeds of 120 miles per hour which was not significantly slower than those in Japan at the time. However, in the subsequent half-century, the gap between the US and other countries widened as competitors surged ahead. Presently, Amtrak's Acela line, running along the same Northeast Corridor, boasts the fastest trains in the US, capable of reaching speeds up to 150 miles per hour, albeit only for a short distance. In comparison, high-speed lines in China, France, and Spain can achieve around 200 miles per hour, leaving little room for competition. Now, before delving further, let's address a fundamental question. How fast must a train travel to be considered high speed? Although there's no official definition, the International Union of Railways considers 155 miles per hour to be the minimum requirement. Sorry Amtrak, your flagship service just misses out. The US is making efforts to close the gap. In December 2023, the Federal Railroad Administration announced a substantial funding injection of over $8 billion for passenger rail projects, including high-speed rail. Among these projects is the California High-Speed Rail, currently underway between LA and San Francisco, although it has faced numerous challenges. Eight years into construction, less than half of the rail has been completed and none of it near the two main cities. The cost has escalated to over $100 billion, and acquiring all the necessary land has proven to be a significant challenge. There are also ongoing developments with Texas Central, still in the early study phase, and Cascadia, which has recently secured federal funding for the planning stage. However, neither project is expected to materialize in the near future. So, is the wait now solely dependent on the California scheme reaching the finish line, whenever that may be? Not if another proposal proposal has anything to say about it. Indeed, a new plan has been introduced and is making rapid progress. Now, before we get into the details, what does it take to be an engineer on something like a high-speed railway? So, what is it that's so interesting about this new proposition? First of all, the company behind it has just completed another railway that many doubted would happen. The Bright Line connects Orlando and Miami, featuring the fastest trains outside of the Northeast Corridor, capable of reaching speeds of 125 miles per hour. While it may not qualify as high-speed rail, the construction of any new railway in the US has proven to be quite challenging. So, how was this accomplished? 
One key factor is that it stands as the first privately funded rail line in the country in over a century, with a cost of $6 billion. Instead of relying solely on public funding, Brightline secured backing from Wall Street to operate these state-of-the-art trains. This funding facilitated extensive work, including the renovation of over 50 bridges, such as the nearly century-old one, over the St. Lucie River. The construction also involved employing challenging techniques like the box jacking method used to position 3,000 ton concrete sections beneath two roadways with the assistance of hydraulic jacks. Despite these complexities, a significant portion of the work focused on upgrading existing infrastructure. The railway largely utilizes tracks owned by the Florida East Coast Railway, sharing the same parent company as Brightline. For the entirely new section between Cocoa and Orlando, Brightline leveraged a state policy that allocates right-of-way next to highways for new rail lines, deciding to prioritize passenger rail when acquired by a Wall Street firm. Okay, but what about that new high-speed rail plan? Well, the company has now set its sights on a far more ambitious project, right on the opposite side of the country, called Brightline West. It's a new $12 billion high-speed railway between Las Vegas and Southern California connecting all the way to Los Angeles. Brightline claims that it will be America's inaugural true high-speed rail line, boasting top speeds of at least 186 miles per hour. While this might seem ambitious given that construction has not yet commenced, plans are set to begin soon, aiming for completion by mid-2028 in time for the Olympics. The 218 miles or 350 kilometers line is slated to connect a station on the Las Vegas Strip to Rancho Cucamonga, just over 40 miles east of LA. From there, passengers can seamlessly transfer to a Metrolink train, reaching Union Station in about one hour. The entire journey between the two cities is anticipated to take approximately three hours, significantly reducing travel time from the current five hours by road. Driving between these cities often involves navigating I-15, a highway notorious for congestion. However, it carves a straight path through the high desert of San Bernardino County. That's why 96% of the new train route will closely follow I-15, with a substantial portion running in between the two roadways. Again, Brightline has been able to secure a critical right-of-way alongside existing infrastructure, this time signing a lease agreement with the California Department of Transportation. Similar to the Florida project, Brightline West won't solely rely on public funds. Private bonds and capital are set to cover the majority of the cost, with over $3.5 billion required from the government, most of which has been confirmed. This stands in contrast to the California High Speed Rail, which has thus far depended entirely on government funding. Brightline West has already secured a $25 million grant for design and construction, awarded in June 2023, and enjoys support from officials in both states. However, it won't be a seamless journey. Apart from the funding gap that still needs addressing, one segment of the route poses a particular challenge, the Cajon Pass. Nestled between the San Bernardino and San Gabriel mountain ranges, the pass features steep grades, even challenging for freight trains. High-speed trains demand relatively flat terrain, necessitating a slowdown through this critical section. Despite this challenge, Brightline West appears poised to potentially complete its construction before its troubled counterpart in California. The struggle for America to establish high-speed rail has been a prolonged narrative, leading many to believe it may never come to fruition. However, with the unexpected success in Florida, where Brightline achieved a notable feat, there is newfound confidence that a similar accomplishment can be replicated on the opposite side of the country, this time with even greater ambitions. The question remains, will this endeavor stall before even departing the station? Or is the long-standing American dream of high-speed rail finally on the verge of becoming a reality? Let us know what you think of this massive project. If there are other more impressive rail constructions that you know of, feel free to drop them in the comments section. Well, I am sure you are going to love to watch our video about 5 billion China, Nepal Railway across the Himalayas. On our channel, make sure to subscribe to us and never miss our amazing videos like this. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Till then, stay tuned.